just a couple of years back, this was my routine. I would wake up in the morning, go to class, come back to work on my assignments, and then eat and sleep. The only thing I cared about in life was to get a good grade, try to go into a good university, and maybe, just maybe, be lucky enough to get in a good job. The only thing I cared about, in fact, was just math, physics, and chemistry. I could never have thought that I would go into entrepreneurship or business. In fact, I didn't even know what entrepreneurship was at that time. A couple of years later, the introvert I was has become an economics major, running five ventures at a time, and present humbly today to speak to the wonderful audience you are. So you might just ask, what on earth happened, right? Well, something simple, yet very powerful. I just realized that successful people, those doing great things in life, were in fact not superhuman. They didn't have magical powers, they could not predict the future, and for sure, they didn't have brains twice the size of ours. They were not gods or aliens, right? So last year, I was at the Clinton Global Initiative University, and uh, I was blessed to meet people like Bill Clinton, Mohammed Yunus, or even Twitter co-founder, Jack Dorsey. And I can tell you something for sure. These guys, they're not smarter than us. They're not better than us. They were just passionate about what they were doing, and they worked hard to see their dreams come true. Now, you might just say, well, of course this is obvious. Successful people are not superhuman, right? Well, you'd be surprised. Just go around and ask people. They just believe for some reason that they can never be as great as Steve Jobs, as inspiring as Martin Luther King, as innovative as Mark Zuckerberg, or as charming on a stage as Barack Obama. You tell them, can you just be like these guys? And they say, never. These guys are out of the world. I can never be like that. And I just want to stop them at that point and ask, why? Why do we put so much limitations on ourselves, on how great we can be, I mean, just remember when you were kids, growing up, and when your father or mother would ask you, what do you want to be in the future? And you would confidently and, you know, look them in the eye and say, I want to become an astronaut. I want to become a pilot. I want to become the president, right? And then a couple of years down the line, the dream to become a president suddenly turns into hope to become a great lawyer. And before you realize it, all you dream about is getting a boring job in an office. What happened? What happened, in fact, is that we killed the dreamers inside us. We started idolizing people like Bill Gates and uh, Mahatma Gandhi, whatever. We just said to ourselves that we can never be as good. After realizing, pretty much, that uh, successful people had just as much brain power as we all do, I decided to do something about it. And my answer was entrepreneurship. Now, when I say entrepreneurship, what do you all think? Ah, come on, that's not for me. Entrepreneurship is just for uh, brilliant uh, finance or uh, economics guys who can run an enterprise. Entrepreneurship is just for that nerd in his dorm who can code the next big thing or create a WhatsApp or Facebook. Well, let me tell you something. That's just bullshit. Entrepreneurship is for everyone. You can all be entrepreneurs. It is not restricted to uh, a certain area or a certain field of interest or to a certain product. Entrepreneurship is everywhere. In fashion, 3D printing, space exploration, anything you can think of. Over the past three years, I developed ventures in media and publishing, in marketing and design, in politics, engineering, and relief work. And I can tell you something for sure. Everyone can be an entrepreneur. It just boils down to the idea that you want not to rely on somebody to give you something, but instead, go ahead and create your own. Make your own stuff. It's as simple as that. Now, I'll tell you an anecdote of how I became the kind of guy who thinks that anything is possible, that any risk in life is worth it. 
I am Moroccan, as uh, I was presented. And back in Morocco, there is uh, this, I don't know if you heard about it, but there is a problem called the Western Sahara uh, conflict. And my government tells us every day, in school, in media, in politics, that there are bad guys, criminals, enemies, hidden in the Algerian Sahara Desert, who are trying to take half of our country, conspiring against us. And there were, at that time, only three Moroccans who have visited these guys. Because anyone who visits them, or tries to communicate with them, or try to understand even what they were saying, is labeled as a traitor. So the three Moroccans who went to the camps, when they got back, they were either jailed or exiled. Now, the crazy person I was, I decided to be the fourth. I was at that time in Norway doing a research uh, paper on the conflict, and I just said, well, let's just go there and see what these guys are saying about the conflict. Let me try to understand both views. I was 17 at that time. Now, spending five days in the middle of the Algerian burning desert, being transported in SUVs with no dashboards and no brakes. I actually had to uh, get down, put a rock in front of the uh, car in, it in order for it to stop. I got dehydrated so many times, food poisoned. And so when you go through this, you just realize that any future risk in life looks like a joke compared to this, right? Nothing can beat me after this. So with this type of risk, I said, I want to live life like this. I will always want to be on the edge, do something that challenged me. And I found that entrepreneurship is the right environment for these kind of people. Because when you think about it, entrepreneur's life is not just having fun, making millions of dollars, going on a yacht, or uh, uh, blowing money around. No. Entrepreneur's life is full of risk. It is risky to start a business from scratch. It is risky to spend time and effort into developing an idea that may or may not be successful. It is risky to trade the comfortable uh, life of an, uh, in an office for the hectic schedule of an entrepreneur. But as great as this risk is, the reward is worth it. It's creating a product and seeing it come to life makes you proud. Creating a service that people use and love means the world for us. Being your own boss, working on your own terms, celebrating the values you stand for in your business is just priceless. Every time I launched a new venture, a new enterprise, I just felt that way. And I would never trade that feeling for anything in the world. Believe me. I'll tell you another anecdote. Not as crazy as the other one, but... So there was this time, a woman contacted me asking for the service of one of my uh, design and marketing startup. And she told us, guys, I want you to design a logo in less than 48 hours. Now here's the catch. It was a weekend, so all my team was scattered around. The logo was to be presented in front of the Dubai Expo 2020 jury. And last but not least, the person asking for it was no one else but Dr. Manahe Thabit, who was the 35th most influential Arab woman in the world, according to Arabian business. No pressure, right? So we spent time and effort trying to work on that challenging and complex logo concept, but we managed to deliver at the end of the day. This is the beauty of entrepreneurship. You put value in the work you do. You put value in the relationship you have with the customer. I didn't see that woman as a number in a database or as a check I would uh, catch, uh, cash at the end of the month? No. I saw her as a person who wanted to request a service, and I was there to make her satisfied with our product. Today, that woman calls me her little brother, and we hang out from time to time. No professional etiquette, right? Now, a lot of people would constrain. Now, I said because uh, entrepreneurship is applicable everywhere, where you just can, somebody can uh, say, well, how about humanitarian relief work? How can you apply entrepreneurship to uh, the, the world of AIDS, blah, blah, blah? Well, it's easy. I have an answer for that. We have lots of, uh, if I, how shocked would you be, in fact, if I tell you that for one of the ventures I developed, and which we were uh, uh, invited to present at the Clinton Global Initiative University, we received funding for it also, 
our clients are Syrian refugees. Now, don't hate me yet. Don't think of me as a bloody capitalist trying to suck the living of anyone who has a penny in his pocket. No. We use the data provided by the UNHCR to build our business plan. And what that data showed is a lot of Syrian refugees, especially in Jordan, would go out of the camp and inside the city to rent houses for as high as $400. Now, here's a problem. There is money flowing. So we said, let's try to do something about it. We decided to come up with an alternative housing option for these refugees, something that is better fitted for the weather conditions, especially that the tent cannot outstand the uh, harsh weather conditions from the extreme heat to the floods and snow in, in the winter. So we came up with this uh, uh, housing option or unit that is better fitted and that can uh, withstand any uh, harsh factors of that region. The beauty is these products were actually cheap, so we can give it to these refugees for as low as $200, which is uh, lower than the rent they pay over a month. So this is the beauty of finding a client base, using microfinance, and then solving a problem that matters. Entrepreneurship and making money in general is never in contradiction with doing great things in life. Now, for coming back for the engineers uh, attending uh, this talk from Minansi University, I want to, uh, to uh, talk to you right now. A lot of us, I was in your position last year. I was taking engineering classes, thinking, how on earth can I fit into this entrepreneurial uh, frame of things? How can I go about doing this? Well, there is a solution for that as well. You have the technical know-how. You have the skill set. All you have to do is surround yourselves with the right team. Entrepreneurship is not a one-man show. You just come and you say, I am the businessman, I am the engineer, I am the accountant, I am the PR guy. There's nothing such as that. Entrepreneurship is about is teamwork, about finding the right people to join you. An example is our latest venture, Hydro Tech Cleaning Solutions, for which we have received funding by uh, Siemens Corporation, and we are incubated for by the Khalifa Fund in uh, the UAE. So count with me. In this venture, I needed a lawyer to file for the patent for our invention, a business student to help me draft the commercialization roadmap for the project, a politics student to help me navigate the governmental framework in the UAE, an engineer to work the technicalities out, and an arts major to beautifully design the product. Diversify your skill set. Try to be as diverse. Reach out to other students from different uh, academic backgrounds but just don't try to be Captain America of entrepreneurship because you'll fail miserably if you do that. Now to conclude, entrepreneurship every day is pushing the limits of what is possible. You have people leading enterprises in the fashion world, the gastronomy world, space exploration. In fact, there are people trying to mine asteroids in the outer space. This is the possibilities that entrepreneurship offers to you. It is the solution for us to drive the economy forward in a meaningful manner. It is our solution to address the problems that matter and make a positive change in this world. It is the solution for us to make jobs once more something that people enjoy doing rather than, some pe rather than something people have to do. Entrepreneurship is for everyone. It is accessible for everyone and it is applicable in any field of interest. Every one of you has an entrepreneur within. The question is, do you want to let that entrepreneur make great things happen? All of you, you are the future, so act like it. Thank you.